government scientists released research Monday about potentially hazardous amounts of mercury trapped in the Arctic's frozen soil, known as permafrost. The findings were published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. Scientists say rising temperatures due to climate change are threatening to thaw that permafrost and release the mercury into the atmosphere. An article published in the Washington Post explains the new research. Chris Mooney is an energy and environment writer for the Washington Post and the author of that piece. He joins me now from Washington. All right, first, Chris, can you explain more about permafrost and its function in preventing accelerated global warming? Absolutely. Permafrost is frozen soil. It covers much of the Arctic, especially in Alaska, Canada, and Russia and Siberia. And it is known to contain huge volumes of carbon. The reason it's there is because essentially this is plants in suspended animation. They died, but they didn't decay because of the freezing temperatures. So they sink beneath the ground, but there's still a lot of, lot of organic carbon that's stored within them. And if the temperatures rise and the permafrost thaws, then they will break down, they will decompose, and they will release carbon dioxide and in some cases another greenhouse gas, methane, back to the atmosphere. Um, you mentioned where most of the Earth's permafrost is located. How much mercury is at risk of being released as permafrost thaws? Well, this is the new discovery, as we knew about the carbon. Now it turns out that for similar reasons, mercury is stored up in permafrost, and that's because it it sort of sails through the air all the time globally, um, but once it attaches to plants in the Arctic, they don't fully decompose, so the mercury doesn't float back out into the air again. So it stays in the frozen soil, and the scientists said that there were some 30 uh, million gallons. They compared it to 50 Olympic swimming pools worth of mercury. Not nearly as much by volume as all the carbon, but mercury is a very potent neurotoxin, uh, especially in certain chemical forms. Uh, it sort of it gets into the ocean, for instance, or it gets into waterways, and small organisms turn it into this dangerous form, and then large organisms eat the small organisms. At some point, uh, large mammals or maybe humans eat the fish that contain mercury, and then they can basically be poisoned. Um, well, you mentioned that mercury is released across the planet when plants die and decay, and you also noted that the Arctic, the process is different because those plants don't fully decompose. So um, is this part of what is seen as sort of a natural event that would happen anyway, this thawing, or is climate change, based on this research, sort of accelerating um, what would normally take place there? Mercury is a naturally occurring element uh, in the system of the Earth, and it has a natural cycle where it travels through the air, the oceans, the waters. Uh, and I guess you would say naturally it gets a bit more stored up in the Arctic because of the role of temperature. Um, so in other words, once it lands on a plant in the Arctic, it might end up buried under the ground in the Arctic for a very long time. What's different is that humans are now accelerating this melting of the Arctic, so you can have a lot of mercury released much faster than you would in a, quote, natural process. And it's the same thing with burning coal. A lot of the mercury that goes into the atmosphere and then travels around the world, falls in the ocean, falls in the rivers, comes because we burn coal in power plants, and that coal also contains mercury, and so it goes up into the air. So given the rate of thawing um, that we're seeing, is there anything that humans can do to slow down or perhaps reverse the trend? Well, the permafrost is enormous. Uh, I don't think there's any way you could sort of engineer it to not thaw over the enormous areas um, where it exists. Uh, basically, if you don't want permafrost to continue to thaw, and it's really only begun, by the way, mm -hmm. um, it could get much, much worse, then you really have to do something about the planet's temperature, and that leads you back down the track of the Paris Climate Agreement and trying to prevent it from warming up too much. All right, Chris Mooney of The Washington Post. Thanks very much, Chris, for your time. Good to talk with you.